Imagine a salesman who needs to travel to seven different cities and return to the city where he started. He wants to find the shortest path that covers all cities. To make it simpler, let's think of each city as a point. One way to approach this problem is by calculating the length of all possible paths and then choosing the shortest one. But how many possible paths are there? If we start from any city, we have six options for the next city to visit. Once we've chosen the second city, we have five options for the third, and so on. We can write it as six factorial. But the direction of the path doesn't matter, because the path from city A to B is the same as path from city B to A. So if we reverse a path, it is still the same path, so we have to divide the total number of paths by two. For seven cities, there are 360 possible paths. A computer can easily calculate all 360 paths. But what if our salesman had 25 cities to visit? Then the total number of paths would be equal to 24 factorial divided by 2. This number is too large for even the fastest computers in the world. So we have to come up with a better way to solve this problem. One way to solve this problem is by using a method called the nearest neighbor algorithm. In this approach, the salesman always picks the closest city that he hasn't visited yet as his next destination. For example, if he starts here, he goes to the closest city, then the next closest, and so on. This way, we get a path that visits all cities. But how can we know if it's optimal? We can't compare it directly to the shortest path because we don't know what the shortest path is. However, we can figure out the lowest possible length any path could have. To calculate this lower bound, we first need to create something called the minimum spanning tree. This tree connects all the nodes without making any loops and with the shortest total distance possible. Constructing this tree is quite simple. We begin by selecting a city randomly and connecting it to the nearest city. Then we choose an unconnected city that's closest to any of the connected cities and link it. We do it until all cities are connected. We are guaranteed to get the smallest possible spanning tree using this method. To show that any path the salesman can choose cannot be shorter than this minimum spanning tree, we can consider this. If we were to remove a single edge from any path the salesman can take, what remains would be a tree, but it wouldn't be shorter than the minimum spanning tree. On average, the nearest neighbor algorithm creates a path that's around 25% longer than the lower bound. A more improved version of this approach is called a multi-fragment algorithm. This algorithm tries to connect any two nodes that would create the shortest edge. However, if one of the nodes is already connected to two other nodes, or the edge would create a loop that doesn't include all the cities, we reject an edge. The multi-fragment algorithm, on average, results in a path that's approximately 17% longer than the lower bound. A more advanced algorithm, called the Christophites and Serdyukov algorithm, offers an even better solution. We start by finding the minimum spanning tree. In a valid path, each node is connected to exactly two other nodes. However, in the minimum spanning tree, some nodes might be connected to an odd number of nodes. So we need to pick these odd connected cities and make pairs between them in the most optimal way possible. After forming these pairs, we add the edges created by the matching process to the minimum spanning tree. If any edges overlap, we consider them as double edges. Now we build what's called an Eulerian tour. This is a path that covers every edge exactly once. Now we go through the tour again and remove every node that we have already visited. That gives us a valid path for the salesman. This algorithm guarantees us to find the path that is at most 50% longer than the true shortest path. And on average, the path created by this algorithm is only 10% longer than the lower bound. However, we can take this even further to improve the path. One approach is called 2-opt. In 2-opt, we remove two edges from the path and replace them with two new edges that reconnect the path in a different way. 
we then check if this change has improved our path. There's also the option of 3 opt, where we take out 3 edges and replace them with 3 different edges. There are even larger k opt optimizations. However, as the value of k increases, the number of possibilities for creating new edges grows, making these optimizations more complex. In most cases, using 2 opt and 3 opt optimizations is good enough. There are also many different clever methods of creating short paths. For example, if the salesman doesn't need to come back to where he started, we can use something called a space filling curve. First, we make a grid. We keep adding more and more lines to the grid until each node is in its own little box. Then we use a special line called a space filling curve that goes through every single box in the grid. One example of a space filling curve is called the Hilbert's curve and it looks like this. We draw the curve on our grid. Now we just follow the curve and order the cities we encounter. The paths we get from using space filling curves are on average about 15% longer than the lower bound. All those algorithms that try to find the best paths are like smart guesses. Even with optimizations, we can't be sure they will give us the shortest path. The traveling salesman problem teaches us that if finding the exact solution is too hard, we can create smart methods that will give us solutions that work good enough.